how's it going everyone tim here tier adventures hope everyone's all well out there as always thanks for tuning in much much appreciated so meaning to get some points videos and stuff going on um i do plan on still getting a video on just going over all the scale points but i think this might be just a little bit easier so we're gonna go over each of my trucks class one two and three and how i came up with all of my points so with our new rectangle rules there were some changes on how all you can receive points or better definitions on how to receive scale points and stuff like that so if you aren't familiar scale points are what we're going to do here we're adding up everything from like transfer cases bumpers and stuff like that all that is worth something when you put it all together now you can have a maximum of negative 60 scale points in class one in both class two and class three you can have a maximum of negative 50 scale points and those scale points when you're all said done you tech your truck in so class one you're at negative 60 scale points now for each course run half of those scale points will be counted towards each run so each run whatever your final score is you're going to gain an additional half of your scale points so for example you're at negative 60 so your scale points per course are going to be negative 30. you run a course and you finish with a score at par at zero you're right at zero for your course score counting penalties and everything progress so from that zero then your scale points are going to be added to that so zero and negative 30 makes your total score now for that course negative 30. so that's pretty nice even though you ran everything right on the money you're still going to end up negative because of your scale points and i know a lot of people don't like scale points and stuff like that but it is what it is that's just the way it is if you're running anything any of the major events anything sorka or sorkers related rather it be rectangle rules or using previous 2022 sorka rules or sorka light scale points exist in all those my first like something like more of a performance scale orientated comp and now scale points or scale items may be required but those won't be counted towards your run so a little run done here on scale points and again i'll link the sorker rules down below there is a scale point section so you can go through here and look and read all the things if you're looking at flat bits or truggies or stuff like that there are some specific rules you need to pay attention to and thicknesses of materials and stuff like that to gain those points accordingly so you cannot receive points for the same item multiple times under different categories. You cannot receive multiple points for duplicate items unless specified. All scale items are considered part of the rig as teched into the event. If any item falls off the rig while driving, it is now considered out of spec and must be repaired. Uh, custom points are defined as anything scratch built in areas that define or allow custom points must have three dimensional body panels that cover the chassis not flat panels that bolt in between visible tube work must resemble a known one-to-one -one body and must be hand formed and fabricated from metal or other rigid materials that meet the minimum specs absolutely no cutting and re-gluing of pre-molded lexan or styrene interiors to gain additional custom points so anything custom it has to be custom you can't take something cut it apart and put it back together and gain custom points it's not custom you just you broke something and fixed it custom is nothing was there and i made something it applies for bodies interiors anything like that and same thing especially with bodies no matter if it's like a pre-molded body like this hilux here even though i cut the body in half and i put the body back together i modified some stuff it's not custom it's still a body i just simply modified something that truly existed i didn't just build this from the ground up so no matter how much body work you actually do to a pre-molded body or something like this you're not going to get custom points back on one of those little parts in there if if any item falls off the rig while driving the vehicle is now considered out of spec and must be repaired so that is a big one and that is a big change so when you're taking stuff in if something breaks or falls off your gas can falls out of the truck while you're on course right there you now have to repair that vehicle rather you choose to stop time lose your minute your touch repo and repair it or you fix it while the clock's running and you're repo to the last gate you're getting a touch or repair or repo if anything falls off even if you have extra things and it's not necessarily part of your tech sheet so you had an extra gas can you didn't it's not in your tech sheet because you didn't need the points but you have an extra gas can on there take that extra gas can off you're not getting awarded any extra for having extra stuff on there so take off anything extra and anything you do have attached make sure it is secured properly bolt it down weld it on shoe glue whatever gorilla glue make sure stuff does not come off of your truck make sure nothing breaks off of your truck it's a terrible way to take a 10 point penalties if you take a tumble 
and your gas can rolls off the back and you're stopped, you're done there. I do believe, I think there has been a question asked about like if your winch line breaks in the middle, I believe that it's going to be the same thing. So definitely double check your winch line before bends. Make sure there's no frays, make sure there's no cuts, make sure you have a good, strong, sturdy winch line that's not going to snap. Class one, let's get started on how I got my points. So first chunk towards my negative 60 is going to be from hard body. I am gaining negative 12 points for a full hard body here. This is just simply RC four wheel drive Hilux body with some slight modifications, but it is nonetheless a full hard body. Now hard body rules have changed significantly since the previous rules. Now before full hard body like this, you got your negative 12. It didn't matter, full hard body, you got negative 12 points. If you only had a cab, you only got half of that, negative six. Now hard body is broke down into sections. Front rectangle, center rectangle, rear rectangle. You can gain negative four for each of those sections or negative five if it's custom. So you can have hard body front, hard body middle, no hard body rear. You know, any order of that configuration. Now the big thing here, and there's been a lot of debate, lots of questions, lots of posts on this next part. And I've iterated this rule in every single time we've done the sort of videos previously. Four hard body points. The body in each section must fill the rectangle when viewed from above. Bodies with inset grills or other oddities where the body does not fill the rectangle between the fenders can be covered by the bumper, winch plate, or vanity plate in order to fill the void. This rule is really going to be crucial for class one. Class two and three is different just based on the rectangle parameters and how, you know, the rectangle, your body rectangle, class one, then class two, and then class three. It gets narrower in, so that changes things. But class one, you have a full rectangle. Your body has to at least meet the leading edge of the front tire and meet the trailing edge of the rear tire. So that area, that is your body rectangle. And then your bumpers have to additionally go in that rectangle and they have to exceed. They have to extend past the tires. Bodies in each section must fill the rectangle and view it from above. This rule particularly, I don't know if it was meant to target, but it really affects the Ford, uh, the Tamiya F350 body, the Toyota Tundra body, Jeeps, um, anything else with like aggressive front end curves. And then this body's pinched, for example, class one, we would still know its shape. So this is where the grill normally is, and then it sweeps back to the headlights. So this curve here, so most people, this body, this grill area, that's what goes to the front of the tires. And then we still have this area. It has to be filled somewhere or another, whether you add styrene in addition to the body or you add material to the bumper what it's looking for and even i had to fix mine when viewed from above and this angle is just probably not going to do it justice so when viewed from above body ends bumper starts bumper obviously has to stick out the furthest when you're driving into something for class one the bumper has to hit first plain and simple for class one the bumper is what needs to hit first so if this was out further or my body was further back and there is a gap, I have to fill that gap. So this is what it's looking for. Pretty much a straight line where there's no air gap. So when you're looking from back here, from up above, you can't, they don't want you to see anything underneath there. It doesn't need to be an air gap. So even how I had my bumper set up, actually, how I have it out here in front, Put the hood on the Hilux, slants down, and extends a little in the middle. So my hood actually extended past my bumper. That's a no-go because the body's out further than the bumper. So I took my painter's tape and I made a straight line from bumper edge to bumper edge, just enough where my bumper would be completely exposed, and I sold the whole front half of it off. It's flat, it's flush, there's no gap. We're good. Very, very picky because that gap is no advantage or hindrance. The gap's just a gap. If you people can live with the gap, it is what it is. But to gain hard body points for that front section or rear, I guess, too, but it's more of a problem in the front. To gain the points for that section, that gap has to be filled. Now, if you just don't want to mess with that gap, you don't want to fill that gap, you think it doesn't look good, you won't lose all your hard body points. You would just lose that front section. So you would still have negative four for the center and negative four for the rear. And then you could just simply make up four scale points. Additionally, throughout somewhere else in the build, there's plenty of ways to make up those four points. So not a, it's not necessarily a big deal. There are plenty of points available out there to reach your negative 60 for class one. Next part here I'm gaining points on in class one is the drop bed. Now again, drop bed also saw some rule changes. 
drop bed must meet or exceed the rectangle parameter per class must have the majority of the floors intact except where the shock hoops protrude and body mounts do not count as protrusions uh, class one and class two must have all protrusions covered and not visible to receive points class three it doesn't matter must have bed sides and there's other rules to go with the bed box now this is also something you you need to pay attention to in here. If you are building your own drop bed into a body or building your own wheel wells, so technically wheel wells aren't required for a drop bed, but if you do have them, there is a specification. So I know a lot of people when they make their own drop bed, they build a big wheel well that covers the shock tower, which is cool. It covers the shock tower, except wheel wells maximum width is one inch from the inside wall of the bed. So from the inside wall of your bed, to wherever the wheel well is, it can exceed one inch. And if you were building your own drop bed and then building a wheel well to cover your shock towers, math-wise, I'm gonna go out and safely bet that you are not going to be able to build a bed, build a wheel well, and cover your shock towers and be within an inch of the inside of the bed. It's probably not gonna happen. So save yourself some time. Don't build wheel wells and cover the shock towers. Don't do it. Cut your holes, make your drop bed, do whatever. Cut holes, let the shock towers come through. One, you don't necessarily need drop bed points on any class. You can hit 50 or 60 without drop bed points elsewhere. But if you need drop bed points, don't worry about it. Just cut the holes in whatever floor you're using, put your floor down, secure everything. There's much easier ways to do it. Scale accessories. You can use it like a cooler or a fuel cell or a gas can. You can haul out the bottom or the side of it and cover a shock tower. Simple, easy, done. Shoe glue, Gorilla Glue it down, it's not coming off. Or to put a tarp over it. It's lightweight. It covers the shock towers. They're not visible. I still have my drop bed points. And they're also worth a scale point. Another easy way to do it is a tonneau cover. And it was verified. You can put a tonneau cover over it. And you can leave your shock towers and everything hanging out. Put a tonneau cover over it. So with the tonneau cover closed, your shock towers aren't visible. So they're good and legal. And at the tech table, the judge or tech person, he can... Pull up, he can open your tunnel cover and then verify the inside of your drop bed. Make sure it meets all of its specifications, close it back up, and you're good. You get your drop bed points and everything's covered, and then nothing can also fall out. So that's the easier way to do it, in my opinion. There's me another negative three points. Next here for some points, I'm going to use a metal roll bar for negative two. Uh, roll bar must be fixed to the frame or a rigid part of the body so it cannot flex under the weight of the rig if rolled. Um, height must be at least 3.2 millimeters. Um, of the cab and the width must be within a quarter inch of the interior bedside and then the minimum thickness for any like tubes sliders well is eighth inch so i am just using eighth inch um, rod there make a roll bar within my eighth inch of the birth line and within my quarter inch of the bedside simple easy done even added on a little winch point simple and done bumpers have their own list of specifications per class to meet and these do. So I have a metal front bumper and a metal rear bumper. So that's negative six points. And in addition to that, I am also going to gain an additional one point for a stinger. Um, stinger, and it's in addition to bumper points. It does not count as a fairlight, and it must be mounted to the bumper. Not which bumper, the bumper. So I put it on the rear. It was I put it wherever it would be out of my way at least. So I put it there in the rear. That next big chunk of points towards my negative 60, I'm gonna gain from the inside of the cab here, but with my interior and my passenger. So I have a custom two seat interior that is gonna be worth negative six points. And I have two drivers that are worth negative eight points total. And interiors are pretty simple. Just some super thin Lexan or some styrene or some craft foam, stuff like that. And for interior, it needs to have a dash, it needs to have a complete floor. And a steering wheel. Nope. Steering wheel is the only pre-molded part that is allowed to count towards the custom points and 3D points. In addition to those components, your floor must be at least one inch in depth from the top of the windshield cowl area. So wherever this area is, measure in, measure down one inch on the inside. And that is how deep your interior has to go. And I'm good. I think I'm about an inch and a half deep on this interior. Just one bench in there counts as two seats. And everyone's new favorite drivers, the Halloween skeleton ornaments. They're six inches tall. They weigh seven grams. So for 14 grams total, it's negative eight points. So that's probably the easiest and lightest scale points throughout this whole thing right there. 
between interior, between a simple foam interior and some skeletons. That was 14 scale points, just like that. So again, the points are there and they're easy to get. Moving on down the next little big chunk here for my scale points, I'm gonna gain negative five points for a chassis mounted servo setup. And then I'm gonna gain negative four points for a transfer case setup. And chassis mounted servo is simply a chassis mounted servo setup, negative five points, and then a transfer case setup here. Divided by the shaft, it is a transfer case and a Ford motor mount. Lots of options out there. And if you don't want a setup with a third, you know, with a prop shaft, you don't want anything split like that, there are transmissions out there that do get you transfer case points and they're one unit, like the Team Grachak T210 transmission, the Exo Alpinus transmission, uh, the Vanquish VFD transmission. They all are an included single unit and they do all receive transfer case points. So there are options out there other than something like that to gain your points. And then to make the last run towards my negative 60 scale points, we're going to go down to the scale accessories. And again, this saw another change as well. Previously, scale accessories were divided into functional scale accessories and non-functional scale accessories. Four, I think what's it, what's it? Six and eight, so for a total of negative 14. So again, scale items, still negative 14 total, but it doesn't matter. You could have 14 functional items, you could have 14 non-functional items, as long as you can equal 14 total, it is okay. I have mine with a winch uh, right here, and this will go through for the rest of the video. Winch did see a little bit of change. So it says winch, including line and fair lead. So all those winches are gonna have lines, obviously, otherwise we can't do anything with them. But previously we could combo or a winch, a fair lead and a hook and gain, you know, three, four, four points skill items from that. No more, that is all included in the winch. No, you don't have to have a fair lead to gain winch points. You're just not gonna gain additional points for a fair lead. So we have my winch right there. And then one that I recommend on everything are these rotors. You can get 3D printed rotors, some nice metal rotors. They're not, they can either be super lightweight or you can even get them weighted if you need the weight somewhere in your vehicle. So, and they can't just fall off and my winch can't just fall out. So that's also good. I have. So we got my winch rotors. I do have a D ring up here in the front um, on the bumper. And then here on the body, we actually have a hitch. We have a license plate. We have a recovery board that is bolted to the body. So it is not falling off. Um, my tarp that covers my shock towers, that counts as a scale item. Then I have this basket, which is also bolted in there. And inside is with its glob of shugu. I'd have a med kit, a snatch block, a little toe strap and a bed wrap. And then gear shifter in the front, it's another negative 13. So just like that, class one, simple, easy road to negative 60. And if you noticed, that negative 60 without the use of sliders and without the use of a roof rack. Um, those were two scale items that I personally don't think with the new rules, they are worth their points versus the hassle of it. First off, roof rack. They now have to be, they have to be spaced eighth inch off the roof, okay. And then they have to be an additional eighth inch thick on top of that. So eighth inch and an eighth inch all here at the highest point of the vehicle. Yes, you can make it super lightweight stuff, but I'm worried about the height. I don't want the height up here. I'm trying to keep as low as a profile as I can. So with the new rules, it's not worth a negative two points for me. And with the drivers, makes up for all of it. And then sliders. You know, previously, yeah, we all just took some metal rods or some saw blades, cut them, and we bolted them to the body and we got slider points. Not that way anymore. Sliders have their own rules. Sliders now have to be mounted to the chassis itself. And then they have their own rules on top of that. So to me, it wasn't worth the hassle. So I just got away with sliders completely. So that's class one. Now class two, and we're actually gonna do this couple of ways. We're gonna do a hard body class two and a Lexan body class two, right? Well, the nice list of how much it takes to hit the negative 50 points in class two with the hard body and then with the Lexan body. And we went over a lot of the you know reasons and examples of stuff. So first off for class two hard body. So uh, we're gonna start our trek towards negative 50. Start with negative 12 points for hard body. Front, center, and rear rectangles, negative 12 points. Next, we're gonna go inner fenders. We have inner fenders front and rear on the class two here. So that is negative one for front and negative one for rear. So there's negative two points. Next little bit here, we're gonna gain points with a metal roll bar again. So negative two points for the metal roll bar within its roof line and within its distance of the inside of the bed. So there's another negative two points. Next up, bumpers. So we're gonna gain negative three points for the front metal bumper 
and negative three points for the rear metal bumper. And then we're going to gain an additional negative one for the stinger here I have in the front. The next big chunk of points will be a custom two seat interior. So there's negative six points for that. And then additional negative eight points for my trusty skeletons inside there. We will have a chassis mounted servo and then we will have a transfer case. And this is the Exo Alpinus transmission, which does count as a transfer case. And you can see it is much smaller, all in one unit. So right there, negative five for the chassis mount servo and negative four for the transfer case. So just those components before headed into the big section of like scale accessories, that puts me at 46 points. So I only need four scale accessories to hit my 50. So we have our winch for one, we have rotors for two, we have a license plate right there and then I have just a bedroll on the inside so only four items with a hard body that was negative 50 points simple easy only needed four scale accessories and again that 50 points so that was without sliders without a roof rack and no drop bed I'm not worried I don't even have drop bed points in class two I'd rather be hard body or Lexan so instead Points are there and it's easy to hit the points. Like, you know, sliders, roof rack, and drop bed, they were given last year. Like, they were almost on everything because they were easy to get. With the new rules, kind of a hassle. So, we're ditching those. I have pointed out Lexan trucks before, but um, Brett at Brazen helped me out quite a bit in class two this year on getting the Lexan pointed out, I think, more efficiently than I had previously. So, let's take a stab at that. Now, 50 points for the Lexan. And we're going to start off, you know, a lot of it's going to be similar, but. Right off the bat, we have a 12 point chunk to make up for with just changing from the hard body to the Lexan body. So how are we making up that difference and what's staying the same? For the Lexan here, again, I still have inner fenders, front and rear. So there's me two points. On the Lexan body, I went ahead and made a metal roll bar. So there's negative two points again, that is back. Now to start making up some of the points, I did an interior cage. And you can see part of it along there um, and the roof. We have our down bars and down bars in front and behind each row, and we do have crossbars and everything here along the top. And so just some very thin eighth inch tubing, brass or aluminum, you can braze it or weld it together. Very lightweight, it's tube and it's inside the body. So it's, it's gonna have extra support from the body as well. So that right there, that simple lightweight little interior cage, that's gonna make up negative three points right there. And then down again, negative three points for front bumper, negative three points for rear bumper, and negative one for a stinger. Next big chunk for the Lexan, full two-seat interior and my two skeletons. So negative six points for my interior and negative eight points for my drivers. Now, if you are using a Lexan interior that has more than one row of seats, that is another way to make up some points. So as you get an additional point for the rows of seats too. So if you have a two-seat or a three-seat, you can gain an additional one or two points for that full custom interior. So it's definitely possible with the Lexan and Lexan bodies out there. And still, chassis mount servo and transfer case. So moving on down to scale accessories. You can have 14 scale accessories and you know we had a good chunk of points to make up for. We've already made up three of the points with the interior cage towards our 12. So now we're gonna make up the rest of it with our accessories. Now again, winch, rotors. We do have a hitch in this bed. Uh, I do have exhaust that comes through here in the front. Um, I do also have a license plate. We have a D-ring back here on a shock tower, a sand ladder that is bolted down. I even have a scale winch stick that is in there chilling. And then on the inside, because this whole body is all the windows and everything are there, what I chose to do since I was using more scale items than I like normally would, I put them all on the inside and attach them inside. So inside we have baskets, ammo boxes, toe straps, med kits, snatch blocks, uh, magazine, gear shifters, stuff like that. So we end up using 13 scale items. So, negative 50, just like that. So, even with a Lexan body, it was relatively easy to hit 50 points. And 50 points on a Lexan without the use of sliders, roof rack, or a drop bed. Just like that, 50 points, both a hard body or a Lexan body for class two. Now, moving on down to class three. Class three, again, maximum scale points for the class is 50, same as class two. And points wise, it's gonna be very similar to like I said on my class two. In the addition that I'm losing the chassis mount servo points for class three, uh, axle mount servo all the way around, front and rear here um, on the class three. Go ahead and take a stab at it. So first, negative 12 points for hard body, front, center, and rear, everything meets its specifications and we're good. Everything there, 
full hard body, 12 points. You're gonna gain another two points there for the metal roll bar. Again, within its height of the roof and within the bed sides there. We're gonna take, we're gonna get negative three points for the metal front bumper and negative three points for the rear bumper. And then one more negative one point for the stinger here in the front. Next up here, um, full interior. And like I mentioned about more rows, more points. So with the Tundra, I'm able to do a second row of seats. So I have a custom four seat interior. So that's worth negative seven. And again, my trusty skeletons there for negative eight points. Two full figures, both passenger and driver. Good to go. But there, transfer case. I am going to gain transfer case points because we are also using the Exo Alpinus transmission here in the class three. Again, it's small, it's compact, it's lightweight, and it gains the transfer case points. So um, definitely a solid option there. And then everything else we're going to gain through scale accessories. We got winch, rotors, D-ring, sand ladder, fuel cell, uh, tow rope, license plate. Um, I do have exhaust here in the bed and then a snatch block and I think a magazine. So Again, those scale items are stuff like my sand ladder bolted down, my fuel cell top here bolted down, the exhaust is bolted from underneath, just like that. And again, you know, 50 points was a pretty easy hit, especially with a hard body in class three. Like I said, so if I were to, you know, make this up instead of a hard body to go Lexan, I would make up the points similar with how I did with the Lexan in class two. I would probably look for um, an interior more like kind of almost SUV for multiple rows for interior cages. So. If I had a multi-row, instead of being like a negative three for just a single, I could gain three points right there for a second row interior. And then maybe like an SUV or cargo area for its additional points. And then I still do also have some scale item rooms to spare as well. So I can gain those points right back up. If I had to do something else, it would probably honestly be a drop bed. Um, that would just probably be the easiest with a Lexan because it's easy to cut out the Lexan and just raise everything up and put in more Lexan and call it good. And with class three as well, because you don't have to worry about shock hoops or anything like that um, for class three. Your shock hoops can come through in class three and you can still gain drop bed points. So not a big deal. Comments, questions, anything like that. Um, as always, put everything down below. I just thought that might be a little bit of an easier rundown on going through scale points. Now, I, I do would like to probably go through one and just kind of go over everything. But there's just some things on here I don't look into a lot because it's stuff that I don't build. Like I'm not doing truggies. I'm not doing two beds or flat beds, stuff like that. And those have some very specific rules with those sections. And if there are any questions, I, I don't have a good answer or explanation on because I just, I don't feel the need for the points. And with going through all this, we kind of explain on each section, the important parts to look for, finding the points. So I said, the points are there. They're easy to hit. Class one, two, and three, easy to hit. Class two and three, Lexan or hard body, it's still easily doable without doing other things that might be more complicated, like sliders and stuff like that. So uh, again, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, that'll wrap this one up. Again, any comments, questions, anything like that, as always, put them down below. Do my best to get everything answered. So in the meantime, everyone have a great one. Crawl on.